let's talk about what's important here, Sean. Who is Leonard Williams? Oh, man, this guy's an unbelievable player. I think when the Giants traded for him from the Jets, you know, everybody wanted to talk about, okay, what do the sacks look like? And, you know, that they always try to label defensive linemen based on sacks and their production. And I tell you, Leonard Williams is one of those guys where the first time I went out to practice, I'm like, good Lord. Like, this guy was unblockable. I think when he first came to the Giants, like, every one-on-one rep, he, he was winning. Um, you know, and it's not just his passing game. Like, what he does on third down is great, but he's an every-down defensive lineman. And on first and second down, what he does against the run is almost as impactful, if not more so, uh, as his pass rushing skills. So he's uh, he, he's got a lot of power. He plays with violent hands. And as a former offensive lineman, you know, pretty much all his moves start off of that first kind of bull rush and power move. And he's got a good push kind of push pull move that every single week he gets guys on. And it's, you know, it's one of those things where it's like the Miyagi crane kick. If done properly, no one can defend. Um, but aside from that, I, I feel like Leonard Williams, the player and from accountability standpoint and from a leader standpoint, He's one of those guys that you love to have in your huddle. You love to have in your locker room because he shows up to work every day. You know, you never have to worry about his effort. You never have to worry about, hey, is he going to play hard? Is he going to show up? So uh, I, think, I think the Seahawks really, they got a heck of a player. Um, I think he's got a lot of good football left in him. Obviously, he's a Pro Bowl player. Um, the, the, the tough thing for Leo is he's just been on bad teams, you know, and it's, he struggled when he was with the Jets. Last year, think about this. Last year was his eighth year in the NFL. It was his first time making the playoffs. And I know talking to him and kind of seeing him, like that meant so much to him to finally get to reach the promised land, if you will. And, you know, you work so hard all season long, and to, for him to have to wait eight years to get that first playoff game, um, I know that meant something to him. Um, so it lets you kind of know, you know, what kind of team player he is. He's not selfish. He's not all about himself. But, um, you know, it's certainly a huge loss for the Giants on the field. Um, and I know there's economic reasons for that. But, um, he's a highly competitive guy, which should fit right in with uh, Pete Carroll's uh, mentality and his team culture. Sean, as you can imagine, Sean O'Hara with us. Every Seahawk fan, I think, loving everything you said right there. The thing that piques my interest the most is he's 29. So how much is left? Because as Seahawk fans, we watched the end of Michael Bennett. We watched the end of Marshawn. We watched the end of some of these guys on their second or third contracts. How much, in your opinion, does he still have left in his legs, in his game, or is this just a half-season playoff rental? Yeah, I've seen zero drop-off in, in his play. Um, you know, I, and just kind of looking at, you know, what I was talking about before, like the sacks, and, you know, people look at the stats when they try to you know, label a player, like what kind of player is he? He's one of those guys that other people get sacks because he's flushing the quarterback out or, you know, he's pushing that pocket back and pushes him right back into that edge rusher that maybe gets the sack. So there's a lot of kind of unseen production from a guy like Leonard Williams, but I think he's still got a lot of juice left in the tank. Um, his technique is so good. I mentioned his hands. Like, he's so strong, but his hands – are always inside and you know that sounds like something very simple you know i oh, keep your hand aside but not everybody does that not everybody does that consistently so um i think you know the other part with this too is you know the fact that he just got traded you know i think as a player you know everybody looks at it like okay hey he's gonna be playing on sunday I, I think that that kind of can can energize a guy you know and you know look he's also coming onto a team where he knows a couple of guys he played with jamal adams with the jets play with Julian Love with the Giants. Um, you know, I'm sure he knows some other guys on the team, but, you know, he's coming to a really good defense and a scheme, I think, that fits him. Um, with Dexter Lawrence here with the Giants, Dexter was the nose, and, and so Leonard was really playing three technique most of the time. He could play five technique. He can move out over the tackle. You can put him down on the center and move him around. So he's, he's very versatile. Um, and, you know, I think for a guy like him, this is just going to add to that fire. Hey, you know what? I, I'm on my third team now. I got a shot at making the playoffs now again for the second time in my career. Um, I think those are things that as a player, once you wrap your head around, how the heck am I going to find a place to live now in Seattle? And, you know, look, he went to USC, so he's a Trojan. So I'm sure Pete Carroll's got something lined up for him. I'm sure he's got a booster that could help him out. Um, but, uh, but that, you know, those are all the, the other things that you got to worry about. Is like, all right, you know, when's my family coming out? And, you know, I got to 
how do I get my car out here? Like I'm in, I'm in a hotel. I'm basically living out of a duffel bag for the next couple of weeks. So yeah. once he kind of gets all that stuff figured out, I think he'll be ready to run. Sean, when you say he's a, a good fit in the Seahawks scheme, what is it about him that, that fits here and what has been sort of a hard scheme to determine even what it is. But right now it seems like it's kind of a, a, a modified four, three. Why does he fit well in what they're trying to do? Well, I think that versatility that I was talking about is what makes him so appealing. You know, he's not a one-trick pony. You know, it's not, hey, this guy can only play three technique. And for those listeners at home, three technique is your defensive tackle on the outside shoulder of the guard. He can play on both sides. He can play right side and left side. He can play that three technique. You can put him down on the nose. Um, You know, look, every defense in the NFL worth a darn. They run what we call a five-down look. You know, Brock, I know you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Hey, you've got five guys covering all five offensive linemen, and it could be a mixture of four D linemen and a backer, or it can be five defensive linemen. He could play any one of those positions. So that versatility and that flexibility um, along the defensive line is, you know, really a, a big part of, of his game. And I think it's something that is he's capable of and he can produce from every one of those positions. And it's because he is so good with his hands. You know, if you have an edge rush guy, you mentioned Michael Bennett. But Michael Bennett was a great kind of edge rusher guy. We loved when he came inside because he wasn't that big. Like, you know what? I mean, he's quick. You know, he had a good hand swipe. But if you grabbed a hold of him and got your hands on him, it was that was locked down central. Um, you know, he couldn't get off the lobster claws. So Leonard Williams, you could put inside, and that's where he kind of pushes that pocket back. And, you know, and I mentioned in the run game, too, I think he's, He's really good against the run, um, and you know he's he's one of those guys that's going to free up the linebacker. So I'm sure Jordan Brooks and I'm sure Bobby Wagner are, are welcoming him with arms wide open. 